Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. Today is Wednesday, July 28th. Um, you may be wondering why I'm doing the video a little bit differently today. When I opened up Facebook and went to do the video, the live video option was not there again. So I'm recording it straight onto my phone and then I'll upload it to Facebook. I'll upload it to YouTube and put the YouTube link. Um, the last few times I tried this, I was only able to put the YouTube link. So hopefully everybody that likes to watch the walk will be able to see it. So today we are talking about the importance of having fear of the Lord. It's the only fear that is the healthy fear for the believer. So um, we're gonna be jumping around quite a bit. We're gonna be spending some time in Proverbs. We're gonna be spending some time in 1 Samuel. But before I get into it, let's go ahead and pray and then we'll go into it. God, I thank you for the fact that you give us that reminder that we are under your wings, that you are protecting us, that we are your child and you cherish us. And that the only healthy fear is that fear of you, that reverential fear where we are in awe of who you are. As we keep those God goggles on our face, help us to remember how amazing you are and that being in your presence is something that we should approach with the greatest amount of respect. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as I said, we're going to be in Proverbs first. Um, we're in Proverbs 1. And this is what it says, the Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. So right away, it gives us the purpose. Why did Solomon write, the, um, why did Solomon write these Proverbs? It's for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. It's also for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, for doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add their learning and let the discerning get guidance for understanding the proverbs and parables, the saying and riddles of the wise. Okay, so right there, it just gave us a list of seven things. Why did Solomon write this proverb? For wisdom and instruction, under, gain, understanding words of insight, receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right, just, and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young, and let the wise listen to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. It's for understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. Seven, right there. Anytime you see the number seven, it is referring to completeness. So these Proverbs, this book of Proverbs, is going to give us a complete understanding of that wisdom and instruction that we need. And then we get to verse 7. So we come straight out of why did we, were these um, Proverbs written? They were written to complete our understanding. But then we get to verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So basically that is a warning. It is saying, don't despise this wisdom and instruction. Cherish it because it's coming straight from the Lord. Approach it with that reverential fear of the Lord with the utmost respect because it is the very beginning of knowledge and understanding. That's part of that fear of the Lord you wait for that instruction to be coming. And it could come through a conversation that happens at the grocery store in a very um, spur of the moment kind of thing. It could also come because, you know, you see somebody that needs prayer and you pray for them. It could be any kind of situation where God is using that situation to give you insight into who he is. I've had times where I was hiking and I was just in awe of the beauty of the nature. And you know, it became this very holy moment where I had that reverential fear because of the respect for what God has done just in creating our earth. As we continue on, we're starting in Proverbs 9, verse 10 and going through verse 12. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One and of the Holy One is understanding. Okay, I read that weird. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. 
Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When you learn about God, you are gaining that understanding. But the wisdom comes from that reverential fear of the Lord. That's where that wisdom comes. Verse 11, for through wisdom, your days will be many and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you suffer alone. Okay, so stop and think that through. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. And if you have wisdom, you get rewards. If you has, have wisdom, your days will be many. Why? Because that wisdom that comes from the fear of the Lord helps to keep you out of trouble. Because you're keeping those God goggles on and you're following the Holy Spirit as you're going through your days. Then we're moving to 1 Samuel chapter 12, starting in verse 20 and going through verse 25. And this is what it says. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You have all done this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. So Samuel is saying, yeah, you messed up. Yeah, you've done an evil thing, but don't turn your back on the Lord. You can turn back to him and you can serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, nor can they rescue you because they are useless. Now, in the Old Testament, they physically made idols that they would worship. However, in the new um, now that we're in modern times, people say, oh, I don't have any idols. Yeah, a, a lot of us do. Your idol could be your children's success. It could be your job. It could be... Anything that pulls your attention away from Christ is an idol. Anything that is more important to you than Jesus is an idol. And it's important to constantly give yourself that gut check. Do I have an idol here? Do I have an idol here? Last night I was, um, I was just reading. I was laying in bed reading and I love to read Christian fiction suspense. And I still hadn't done the Bible reading that I had planned to do for the day. And I was kind of grumbling to myself because I had to put down the suspense book to pick up the Bible and get my Bible reading done that I had planned for the day. And it gave me that moment where I was like, whoa, wait a minute, I gotta stop and think about this. I should not be putting off reading the Bible to read a fiction book just for, for an entertainment purposes. That Bible needs to be the top priority. And here I am having a horrible attitude to it. I allowed that suspense book to have more value. And I, I got on my knees, I repented and I said, Lord, I'm not gonna do this anymore. Thank you for pointing that out to me. I'm done with this. We all have those moments where things just get out of line and that fear of the Lord gets taken for granted. It's important to keep it at the front of your mind. Verse 22, for the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. Once you are his, you are his. And he is not going to turn his back on you even when you turn from him. And that, that gives you more reverential fear for him because you know you can't push him away. He's never going to move away from you. He'll let you move away from him, but he will never move away from you. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way that is good and right. Stop and think about that. Did you ever think that you may be sinning because you're not praying for somebody? It's important that you pray for people, even the people you don't like. Keep them in your prayers. Take those people that you don't like and make them a priority on your prayer list because you never know how that person may change when the Lord enters their life. Verse 24, but be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. So it's important to remember to fear the Lord, serve him faithfully with all your heart. And that means you've got to keep those God goggles on and remember all the things that he's done for you. Write down your testimony. Write down those moments where you depended on God and it came out okay. Write down what the Lord has done for you. Post it on the wall in your prayer closet and let it be a reminder to you 
of all the things he's done. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.